with a camera. Starring Charles Bronson. This is not Reno or Las Vegas where gambling is legal. It's a few hours out of New York City across the state line where it's illegal. I'm Mike Kovac, freelance photographer, made up to look like a big spender. Because tonight I was up against fast and dangerous company. Evening. Pretty lively down there, isn't it? Oh, uh, I wonder if I can see Mr. Bradman. I'd like to cash a check. Come in. Mr. Bradman? Yes? Uh, I'd like to cash a check, if I may. Oh, uh, certainly. Always glad to accommodate our guests. With proper identification, of course. Well, naturally. Cigarette? Thank you. Allow me. Thank you. I really don't need much. Well, now, let's not be shy, my friend. Perhaps as collateral, you might care to leave your lighter camera. The one you just took my picture with. Well, I guess we can forget this dodge, huh? I observed you earlier in the gaming room. One of my boys recognized you. Mike Kovac, isn't it? That's right. Why don't you stop me sooner before I shot so much film? All right, Kovac. The camera. Oh, no, 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 don't be hasty, Earl. Huh? After all, Mr. Kovac's a very distinguished photographer. Now, tell me, just what brought you here, Kovac? Well, I figured it wouldn't be too hard to uh, sell a nice layout on a crooked gambling house. Mm -hmm. Especially with an election coming up, huh? Very enterprising. Although I hardly like that term, uh, crooked gambling house. Well, that's a little expression I picked up from reading John Payson's speeches. You know, he's been blasting you all during his campaign. If he wins that election for governor, you're going to be closed down. So I figured I'd uh, take some pictures before the place was boarded up. I see. Well, Mr. Kovac, if the shot you just took of me turns out good, uh, send me a print, will you? Nice to have met you. You're not going to take the film? Why should I? Mr. Payson claims I'm dishonest. But I run an honest house, and I hardly think stealing your film would be an honest gesture. Good night, Mr. Kovac. Good night. Are you crazy? Those pictures will give the Payson campaign a real boost. No, no, no. They're not very important, Earl. It's the pictures Kovac plans to take next that I'm interested in. What? You see, I happen to know that he's already made arrangements to photograph Payson's family sometime this week. So what? It can only hurt us. On the contrary, Earl. I think Mr. Kovac's photography can help us very much. You see, I have someone in Mr. Payson's household who works for me. Last night, pictures of a gambler with crooked money riding on a political campaign, Walter Bradman. Today, an honest lawyer who had sworn to smash the gambler syndicate if elected, John Payson. I didn't know it yet, but I was being set up as the fall guy in the fight between these two. All right, now hold it. Ah, thank you, now you can relax. <laughs> Mr. Kovac, you sure you don't want some coffee? Oh, no, thank you. If I start drinking coffee now, then I'll relax and we'll never finish. What I'd like now is uh, some shots of your daughter. I sent Miss Hollis to get her dressed. She'll be down soon. Hurry up! Is it true we're going to be in all the magazines? Well, you're going to be in one of them, anyhow. Would you sit down over here now? Would you move this way, Mrs. Payson, please? Of course. Right in the middle, Jesse. Come down. Thank you. Now, make it nice and relaxed, easy, casual. This will be the last shot. Um, 
Oh, why don't you touch the tip of her nose as though she has a snub nose or something, you know? She does have a snub nose. <laughs> right, that's enough out of you. <laughs> that's it. The hole right there. Ah, that does it. Oh, let's take some more. Hey. <laughs> Miss Hollis, would you please take our little chatterbox back upstairs for her study period? She can't. This is her weekend away. Oh? I thought I might drive in with chauffeur when he takes uh, Mr. Kovac back to the station this evening. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did forget. Now you go right ahead. Thank you. I'll just take a moment to change. May I help you, sir? Oh, yes, please, would you? Thank you. themselves anymore. Gee, it sure isn't like it used to be. A fellow always had somebody to talk to. And I buy you folks a drink. Nice young married couple laying sick. You can tell that a mile away. No, no, no. We're not married. But I will take that drink. Nothing for me, thank you. Oh, come on. We're both off duty. I'll get you some. Say, speaking of people, you know, the first time I ever saw Woodrow Wilson was on a train. I was going to Chicago from Cedar Rapids, that's in Iowa, and uh, I just got on, got myself nicely seated, and I turned, accidentally turned out like, who do you think I saw? There he was, I never will forget. Suddenly the fix was on, I knew it. I didn't know who or why, but I knew what, I didn't have my negatives. And that means panic for a photographer. Well, he isn't, huh? Well, maybe you can tell me, was there anybody else out there taking pictures of Mr. and Mrs. Payson? No, sir. And you did not leave any film holders here, sir. I took your equipment myself to the porch and handed it to the chauffeur. Did Mr. Kovac leave any film holders in the car when you drove him to the station yesterday? No. Uh, Mr. Kovac, I've just spoken to the chauffeur. Nothing was left in the car. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Pace, and I was just trying to get in touch with you. I can well imagine you were, Mr. Kovac. All right, Kovac, just what is it you want? Well, sometime at your house, I picked up the wrong case of film. Now, what I've got here is scenics. There's the Hudson River and George Washington Bridge. Let me put it this way, Kovac. Just what do you think you'll hold me up for? Hold you up for? You don't know. Know what, Mr. Payson? You remember the picture you took of me and my wife and daughter seated on the sofa? Oh, these are slot machines. The man next to me is Walter Bradman, the gambler I've sworn to shut down. The other man is his associate. But of course, you know them both. And this one is even better. The pose where you had me reaching down to help my daughter Kathy up from the sofa. And this one is your masterpiece. Recognize me touching the tip of my wife's snub nose? You know, Mr. Payson, these are all composites. Exactly. Done by an expert, Kovac. Just what are they paying you for helping in this blackmail scheme? Oh, no, wait a minute. You don't think I had anything to do with it? I told you I lost my case of film. All of those poses were staged exactly to match up with these. And I give you credit. But there's one thing you've forgotten. Blackmail is a felony. And unless you retrieve every single one of those prints and all of the negatives, I'll be curious to see how you composite yourself out of a penitentiary cell with your trick camera. Think it over. I was ready to blow up, so I went to see Pop. Since a small boy, I know Doors I had to jump through, not walk in by. I'm sorry, Pop. What'd you find out for me? Who had possession of your films? I had them. They were never out of my possession. Uh, Payson's servant 
He did help me carry the stuff out to the car. And then the chauffeur, he, he loaded the bags into the car. When we got to the station, he unloaded them. I would like to see the composites. Perhaps they will tell us something. Uh, I would say beautiful composite work. Control of light source matching the action. But of course, impossible. Why impossible? In this city, three men only had this artistic quality. Two are now dead and the third one is in prison. I will show you at a photographer smoker. This was in a, in a beer hall. Mr. Marek Stephens, dead. Mr. Jacob Ignaski, dead. And lastly, the man who is now in prison. Let me see that. Oh, I know him. This guy was the talkative old man in the club car on the train. What's his name, Bob? Clyde Bassa. Bassa? Knowing the name is one thing, knowing where he is is another horse. Uh, obviously, he's no longer in prison. Look, Pop. Call Lieutenant McTavish at Homicide. Ask him for Bosser's address. Now, he's the next convict, so it must be on file. Now, where will you be? I'll call back. You'll do it, huh? Sir, so, what are fathers for? Hey, you can't barge in here. Well, that's all right, Earl. Get him out of here so we can talk. Earl, Mr. Kovac wants to talk. You know why I'm here. Well, I assume it's because you took some excellent pictures of me in my place and you'd like to sell me a few prints, right? I think you're the only one who can benefit from embarrassing John Payson. And I think you're responsible for stealing my negatives and hiring a man by the name of Clyde Bosser to make composites. Bosser, huh? No, I don't believe I've ever heard of a man named Bosser. As a matter of fact, what is all this talk about composites, anyway? Don't play it dumb. I want my negatives. You turn them over to me now, there'll be no squawk. But I'm telling you right now, man, you use any part of my work on a scandal campaign against John Payson, and I won't stop until I've found Bosser and proved that you faked those composites. I see. Uh, tell me, Kovac, are you interested in making any money? Not your kind. And I'm not going to settle for anything less than those negatives. Well, now, not so fast. I really don't know a thing about these negatives. I was merely curious as to the kind of man you were. All right, you have it your way. But if I can prove you're behind a stunt like this, you're going to be washed up for good, even if Payson loses the election. <laughs> just about to send for you. How many times have I told you to keep your mouth shut? Brad, honey. You told Mike Kovac about Bosser. Why would I tell him? Because Bosser told me you were drinking with him in the club car. I've told you never, never to drink. I had one. Well, so maybe it was two. What difference does it make? You know I wouldn't let any name slip. Well, Kovac knows somehow. And if he ever gets to Bosser, we Now, never mind. I'll handle Bosser in my own way. Now, wait a minute. He's an old man. What do you think you're gonna do? Well, now, honey, I'm not gonna hurt him. 
If that's what you're worried about. Just get him out of the way for a little while. Like a nice little vacation trip to Florida. Till after we beat Payson in the election. Hmm? Yeah, but... Now you better go on back to the house. Okay, but no rough stuff with the old man, huh? came here about. Hey, how would you like to take a nice trip up north, huh? To a cool cabin on a lake. No. All expenses paid. No, I'm on parole. I can't leave the city. Now listen, Mike Kovac knows about you. So I say you're getting out of here. Now, tonight. Just, just, just wait a minute. Just take it easy. We had an agreement. I, I did the job, now I'm through. Now you get out of here and let me go to sleep if I can. Oh, look, I'm not gonna fool with you, old man. You're gonna do exactly as I say. Hey, just take it easy. Now, before I leave this city, I'd go to that parole officer and I'd tell him I just thought this was some kind of a practical joke you were pulling. One word out of you and I'll... It wouldn't be any good to go threatening me. Now, just get out of here and let me sleep. Now, look! You think... Get it out! You spoil this whole deal! You're out of your mind! You're out of your mind! You're out of your mind. Pop, I know where the street is. It's in uh, Greenwich Village, I believe. What number did the lieutenant say? 16? All right. Don't worry, Pop. I'm the carefulest son you've got. Yeah, I know. The only one, too. All right, bye, Pop. Mr. Bosser? Mr. Bosser? Right, Bossa, he was dead, Michael. Yeah, he was dead, Pop. The police were there. But you don't believe it was an accident? Oh, I didn't say that, Pop. This is why I'm working this bluff. Let's see if I can find out. Now this. Now, this is a picture I took of Bradman in his office when I lit a cigarette. This is one of the old man lying dead in the alley with his arms spread out. This I took at a fifth, wide open. And this is a picture of the room background. Shut. So I put them all together into this composite. What do you think? Well, perfect. That is, if you don't look too close. Well, Pop, 
This is bait for a trap. If I can get Miss Hall to turn against this hoodlum gambler, that's about all I can hope for. They drove out to the Paysons that same night. All I'm trying to do is square myself with you people. And here's some proof. That's a shot of Miss Hollis in the casino. Now, she really works for Bradman, not for you. That's how he knew that I'd be here that day to take pictures. And you think she exchanged the film? No, but I think the old man, Clyde Bosser, made the switch when I went to the bar in the club car. After I figured it all out, I went to Bosser's apartment. But Bradman got there before me. And they had a fight. He pushed the old man off the balcony. He's dead. You're lying. They wouldn't dare kill him. Oh, it's true, Miss Hollis. I don't believe you. This is some kind of a trick. But I saw it with my own eyes. He's dead. Brad promised me they wouldn't hurt him. Father was an old man. Just wanted to be left alone. He didn't want to get mixed up in this thing. I talked him into it. And now he's dead. I'm sorry, Miss Hollis. Was Bradman behind this whole blackmail scheme? Yes, he was. Stay with me. I'm going to borrow this for just a little while, Mr. Payton. Miss Hollis, wait. Wait, the pictures are fake. Hello, honey. What are you doing here? Get out. Sure. You killed my father. Now I'm going to kill you. Honey, listen, you're all wrong. You were there. So was Mike Kovac. He took this picture from across the street on the fire escape. No, 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 nobody was there. He couldn't possibly have seen me. You shouldn't have killed him, Brad. Oh, no, baby, it was, it was an accident. He was an old man. Sometimes he was hard to get along with, but you shouldn't have killed him. Will you let me tell you what happened? This picture tells us. But it, it doesn't tell the whole truth. It, it was an accident. I tried to save him. You once told me that if you shoot a man in the stomach, it takes a long time to die. She was going to shoot me. She was going to kill me. Don't move. I warn you. He's got something he has to confess. I want you to hear him say he murdered my father. But I didn't murder him. It was an accident, I tell you. He stumbled. I couldn't help him. You're lying! <laughs> <laughs> You have to be snooping around with your camera. The fire escape. What fire escape are you talking about? The one on the opposite balcony. There's no fire escape there. That's just a brick wall. What about this? Oh, that's just a, a photo composite I made up. They're fun, aren't they? <laughs> Time we let the police in on us. What do you think, Mike? Yes, sir, Mr. Governor. Mm -hmm. 